Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back, and watching. I appreciate it. Hope your day's going really well. I'm in Luminar 4 today, and this video is really for new users, those that are new to Luminar 4 and haven't really had a lot of experience editing in this amazing program just yet. I get a lot of questions from new users, and I thought I would make a few videos here and there that allow you to hopefully get up and running really quickly. Now, I did do a 10 video tutorial series, which I'll link to there, and I recommend you checking out after you watch this video. But this one is really to get you up and running immediately and editing and enjoying your experience in Luminar 4. So let's get started with it. Uh, the first thing you have to do is tell Luminar where your photos are if you're using Luminar 4 as a library. Now, you can also use it as a plugin to popular host applications like Lightroom or Apple Photos, in which case you don't need to import photos into Luminar because you will access Luminar as a plugin from those other apps. But if you're using the library, the first thing you can do is in the upper left, there is the plus sign. You can either add a folder with images or edit a single image. Either way, you'll bring the image, uh, which will be a single image in this case, or the folder with multiple images in it, into Luminar. And as soon as you do that, you will see folders show up over here on the right-hand side. This is the folder structure in Luminar 4, and all it does is it mirrors the folder structure that is on your hard drive, you know, whether it's internal to your system or on an external drive. These folders are added to Luminar, but it's just reflecting or mirroring the folder structure that's on your drive. So one of the first steps I recommend doing is making sure that your folder structure is organized in a way that makes sense to you. I've organized mine by location, and then within each location or broad area, I list them by location uh, with a little bit more specificity uh, and date. Again, it's personal preference, do what makes sense to you, but that's the key tip, I think, is do something that does make sense to you so that when you add the folders to Luminar, you can see them here and you'll recognize it and you'll understand which photos are where. One of the nice features of the library in Luminar is when you click on this All Photos up here, you can see that it sorts through them by date, starting with the year and then further down by month and even by day. In addition to the folders that I have down here, you also have the ability to create albums. Albums are just virtual collections of photos. So I've got them listed by location, and these are some of my favorite edits. The great thing about albums is because they're virtual collections, you can have photos from different folders in the same album. Okay, now to edit photos, I've clicked on this demo files folder here, and I've clicked on this photo. If you see a yellow highlighted box around your photo, you know that you've selected it. In order to edit, you have to be in the edit window. So we've been in the library tab here or window, which shows the different folder and album structure. There's also edit, and that brings you into the editing pane. Uh, and then the other thing to be aware of is there's an info tab. So that will give you the EXIF data for each of your photos. But I'm gonna go back to the edit tab. A great way to get started editing in Luminar is to use the built-in looks that come with it. So you can click here on looks, and you will get a menu that pops up. There are a number of different looks packs that are built in, including essential, street, landscape, portrait, lifestyle, dramatic, and aerial. These are various other looks packs that I've either created or purchased, or sometimes Skyloom gives them away for free. But I'm gonna stay in this landscape looks pack, and I'm just gonna click AI Landscape Enhancer. And with one click, you can see it adjusts the photo. Now, one thing to be aware of is if you look on the right-hand side, it says Essentials, and that's the name of this first tab that we're on. There are four different tabs here that correspond to different categories of tools that you can use to adjust your images. We're in Essentials, and the highlighted tools are the ones that have been used in this look. And you can use a look as a one-click fix for your photo, but you can also then go in and adjust the sliders further to enhance or decrease the amount of that intensity. And uh, that just gives you a lot of flexibility and power to really control the look of your photo. You can start with a look and then adjust it in order to fine tune it to your uh, preferences. Now, if you prefer not to use looks, you can just go into the Essentials tab and use the various tools that are built in. Light is kind of like a raw develop type tool and it gives you a lot of control over your photo. In this case, I might bring down the exposure, possibly increase some smart contrast, pull down the highlights a little bit, bring up the shadows. 
And the great thing is you have a lot of power and control over your photo, not just in the light tool here on the Essentials tab, but you've got AI Enhance, which gives you really intelligent use of these AI tools to impact the look of your photo. You might wanna do a little bit there, maybe come over to color and give it a little bit of vibrance and maybe a little bit of saturation. You can come in here with a details enhancer and bring up, let's say, medium details in this case in order to pop a little bit more crispiness in the Vatican here in this photo. You could come to landscape enhancer and take golden hour to give it some of that warm golden sunset glow. And in just a couple of moments, we've gone from a very basic photo to one that has a lot more pop and a vibrancy to it. Jumping over to the second tab, which is called creative, you have the AI sky replacement filter or tool, it is absolutely amazing. It will automatically figure out the sky for you and allow you to replace it as easily as that. Now, you can come in and further refine the settings to adjust the sky to the photo that you've added it to, but you can see I've very quickly gone from a blown out, pretty lifeless sky to something much more interesting and dramatic that actually fits this scene really well. Now what I recommend doing is once you do your sky replacement, and by the way, I recommend doing that first if you're gonna do it, then go back to the Essentials tab and use some of those tools to further refine the look. In addition to sky replacement here on the Creative tab, you've got sun rays where you can add sun starburst kind of look to uh, any light sources in your photo. You've got dramatic, which as the name implies, will give you a little bit of crunchiness, give you a little bit more moodiness to your scene. You've got matte look, which is a little bit of a sort of vintage feel. You've got mystical, which gives you some uh, sort of dreamy kind of moody look to your photo. Adds a little bit of shadow and contrast. You've got LUTs, you've got texture overlay, you've got quite a few powerful filters here, but in really no time at all, you can take a somewhat boring photo and turn it into something a bit more creative and interesting using the tools on the Creative tab. Some of the other really popular tools in Illuminar 4 are on the Portrait tab. That's the third tab down. The first one is AI Skin Enhancer, and as the name implies, it does a great job of enhancing skin and smoothing it out. This is a selfie, for lack of a better word, an iPhone shot I took of myself, but you can see before and after. I'll zoom in a little bit, but there's before and after. You can see that my skin has been smoothed quite a bit. That's a wonderful, powerful tool, and as you see, it intelligently determined my face and made adjustments accordingly. The Portrait Enhancer tab has a, literally a massive amount of tools here. It's got face light, so you can see how it has automatically detected my face and is providing a little bit of light to that. Red eye removal, eye whitening, eye enhancer is a little bit like adding some clarity or crispness to the eyeball itself. Dark circles removal will actually help lighten those uh, circles that get under people's eyes when they're really tired like I am. Slim face, hey, I would take advantage of that. So I can actually slim my face in this photo and enlarge eyes. I can also increase the size of my eyes, which if you ever take a portrait and somebody's a little bit squinting, it can help to open up their eyes. Eyebrow improvement, you can saturate lips and add redness, but very quickly, as you can see, you can go from a fairly uninspired uh, self-portrait here with an iPhone to something that looks a little bit more professionally edited. There's also high key and Orton effect, and Orton does a great job of adding some soft softening and soft focus and kind of a little bit of contrast as well. Great way to add mood to a portrait. Okay, and not to be forgotten is the professional tab here, the last of the four editing tabs where the tools for editing your images reside. The professional tab, don't let the name scare you off while the tools are very powerful and admittedly are a little bit more involved than some of the other ones, they are still basic sliders. So what I recommend doing is coming in here and just moving some of these sliders around to see how it impacts the look of your photo. Advanced contrast, as the name implies, allows you to selectively enhance contrast across highlights, midtones, and shadows. Adjustable gradient lets you separate the photo between top and bottom and make contrast, exposure, shadow and highlight, and warmth and vibrance adjustments in either region. Dodge and Burn allows you to selectively paint in lightning or darkening adjustments to help you control the light and the contrast in your image. Color Enhancer is massively powerful with this brilliance and warmth here. You've got color contrast, split color warmth, and down below, you've even got color balance. It can very quickly help you impact 
a, a powerful color look in your images. And of course, there's photo filter and split toning, one of my favorites, which separates highlights from shadows and allows you to apply a color look to each one independently. Now, in addition to all these amazing editing tools, you also have the ability to add new layers. So you can come over here to the layers panel and just say plus and you can add a new adjustment layer or a new image layer. So an adjustment layer would be if you've done a number of adjustments and then still want to experiment some more, but don't want to impact the adjustments you previously made, you can add a new adjustment layer, make those adjustments, and if you don't like it, you can just remove that layer. A new image layer allows you to add a new image on top. So maybe you're using a overlay of some sort. I've used this for like snow overlay to make it look like it's snowing or raining in an image. You can use it for composite work to add a new image layer. It really gives you a lot of power and creativity on top of your images by having the layers functionality built into the product. And the other major thing to be aware of over here is the canvas tools. There are four major canvas tools, crop and rotate. So if you want to crop or rotate your image, you can do those adjustments in the crop and rotate tool. You have an eraser, you have clone and stamp, and you even have lens and geometry, which will help you fix verticals and remove distortion from your images. And once you're finished, if you would like to export your photo or share it, there's a little icon up here that allows you to do that. You can say export to image and you will have some various settings here you can choose from, including naming the file, resizing it, adding or changing the color space or the format, even sharpening if you'd like to. And of course, your quality setting is there. Alternatively, you can share with some uh, common photo sharing applications like Flickr or if you want to go to LinkedIn or SmugMug, you can even open in other apps from here. So that gives you the ability to take your finished work and either export it or share it socially. So that's a quick high level tour of some of the power and a quick demonstration I might add of the power and the flexibility and the capability of Luminar 4. This video is designed to give you a quick tour of what you can do. There's really a lot of power and a lot of flexibility. And frankly, Luminar 4 gives you so much control over your images. It's a lot of fun. I love it. I make a lot of videos about it because I adore the product. I hope you learned to love it as much as I do. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please do. I've got a lot of videos here that will help you. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up or comment if you like this kind of content. I'll do some more kind of getting started type videos because I do have a lot of new users coming to my channel, which I appreciate very much. And I hope that I can help you quickly launch into your editing experience with Luminar and get the results that you really want to get. So thank you for watching. I'll be back soon with more videos and have a great day, my friends. Take care and adios.